What's going on everybody? My name is Retta and today's video is a little bit informal. I just it just kind of popped into my mind while looking at Pershing Square. Um, a lot of people are kind of jumping on the SPAC bandwagon. They don't really understand what SPACs are and they see it hyped up in the media. So today's video is just going to be a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit of a crash course on what SPACs are, uh, the pros, their cons. That way at least you can go into the trades with a tiny little bit more information than you had prior to watching the video. So uh, first, is, first is first. Let's define SPAC, right? So a SPAC is a special purpose acquisition company. What this means, uh, a good analogy I think is like we take a bunch of theoretical, you know, investment geniuses and we put them into a room and we give them some money, right? They take that money, they put it into a trust account, you know, quote unquote, and then they put that trust, they make that trust public. Right, so they're like, okay, we got this much cash. We're going to have this many shares, uh, and if you guys believe in the team that we've put together, then go ahead and purchase these shares. And whenever we end up figuring out which company we're going to purchase, which company we're going to merge with, you're going to own shares of that company that we merge with, and then you're going to be a uh, basically. It's like jumping on the. Basically, it allows for new investors like you and I to jump on to the bandwagon prior to like overhyped companies going public, right? So uh, a good example from this, I mean, maybe we can just jump into uh, we can just jump into one that I think is fairly popular right now, and then we'll talk about. Uh, it, it, sometimes you do have some like unicorns, right? Abnormal companies uh, such as Pershing Square, which they're, you know, maybe they're a little bit larger or they're managed a little bit differently. And I'll try to touch on that. That way you guys can understand. But let's talk about the general spec. So the, fir the first thing we'll go to here is um, IPOE. Okay. So uh, uh, IPOE, basically, a group of investment geniuses got together. And they set up a trust fund account with some cash in it, right? So they take that cash and they're like, hey, you guys are allowed to join us on our journey before we merge with a company or figure out which company we're going to merge with. You can buy these shares at 10 bucks, okay? So anything above 10 bucks is going to be uh, is going to be above net asset value. So what does that mean? It's a fairly popular term. Net asset value is how much everything in the company's worth if you were to sell it bit by bit. So if Susie was running a lemonade stand, for example, and she had fifty dollars worth of lemons, then her net the net asset value on that lemonade stand would be like fifty bucks. In this case, with these spacs, they've got a hundred million bucks, let's say, and they make a million. Uh, they've got a hundred million bucks, and I don't know. We'll say they make a hundred shares. So each share is one million dollars. That's the floor. That's what the price the spec comes out at. It comes out at a million bucks, and you could buy one or one hundred shares, and that's going to entitle you to a part of uh, uh, the spec. You're going to be. It's kind of like joining in on the management team, and you're kind of trusting that they're going to find a good investment for you. Then these uh, these management teams. As, as this capital is being raised, they go out and they're like, okay, they try to talk to companies that are trying to go public. And they're like, hey, look, we'll take you public. You give us a certain percentage. We'll, we'll sponsor your public. Uh, you guys going public. It'll be faster than an initial public offering. It will give you guys some cash to get kickstarted. And we'll take like 20% uh, uh, as our fee for doing things, right? And that's essentially what a SPAC is. So in IPOE's case, they come out at 10 bucks, right? And anything above ten dollars, right? So they remember. Here's the cool thing: is like uh, these are usually run by hedge funds, right? So they they can never lose money. Worst case scenario, they get back their ten bucks per share. The people that are taking on the risk are investors like you and I. And anytime we buy above ten dollars, our risk is like the price minus the net asset value. Okay. Then eventually they come up with, oh, we're going to merge with in IPOE's case, so in social capital's case, they come up with, oh, we're going to merge with SoFi, right? Now, uh, if we like SoFi and we think SoFi is a good investment, we can keep our IPOE shares and they're just going to automatically convert to shares of SoFi. Fantastic. SoFi gets some money to get started in their public world, right? Well, uh, we get shares of SoFi and then, uh, the, you know, the, the guys that are running social capital, they get to keep some cash. Uh, they get to keep some shares as a little bit of a purchase price. So what, uh, uh, I'm sorry, as a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, like, hey, we took you guys public. We get to get some cash, right? So here's the deal. The pros are, 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 are you know, aforementioned, right? It's faster than an IPO for the company that's going public. They get, uh, they get cash invested. Uh, they get cash invested as they're going public. 
And you get to kind of... You and I, as early retail investors, we get to jump on the bandwagon for these companies like Lucid Motors, right? Or, or, or SoFi before we would have been able to do it typically, right? So typically it would be an IPO and then we would jump on the bandwagon. This is kind of like a little bit like a little pre-IPO, right? What are the dangers, right? Is this, are SPACs these big, big time market fads? I think that's a really interesting question. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep my opinion out of the video because I, I want this to be as informative as possible. But for example, here's, here's, here's the deal. If you're running a SPAC and you got IPOE at 10 bucks, right? You come out with IPOE at 10 bucks and IPOE shoots to 20 bucks on, on, on the news that the merger is going through and everything is going fantastic. That's all fine and dandy, except the guys who came up with the idea for IPOE, they've got zero risk on, they've hands, on their hands. So they just doubled their money with no risk because they're always going to be able to redeem those shares at 10 bucks. Now... IPOE becomes SoFi, and you and I, the retail investor, get uh, get SoFi at twenty bucks a share, right? So, or, or, or at whatever price we purchased IPOE in between ten and twenty bucks, right? The danger here is that we're the ones taking on the risk. The institutions aren't taking any risks. And, well, in all honesty, the, the companies that are going public really aren't taking any risk. The only downturn for them is they got to give up some shares. A popular example here is Churchill, uh, uh, Churchill Capital with, run by Michael Klein. So, my, so here's the deal. Because sponsors, uh, because sponsors get 20% of the shares outstanding when they take a company public, right? So IPOE will get 20% of SoFi. When uh when SoFi ends up once it ends up getting pushed through, in this case Michael Klein or Churchill Capital, because of uh, they're going to get twenty percent of Lucid Motors when Lucid Motors when when the merger closes, right? That's three hundred and fifty million dollars in gain to take Lucid Motors public. Three hundred and fifty million dollars to take Lucid Motors public. So they're the guys that are really making out here, right? It's just the way that I like to think about it is, is it a market fad? It might be just another way for these guys to squeeze some more commissions out of us now that the market, you know, now that most brokers are commission free. Anyways, with my opinion out of the way, uh, let, let's talk about uh, some unicorns in this space. The One of the largest ones, ones uh, that's being talked about right now is Pershing. Uh, so as many of you guys know, Bill Ackman runs Pershing, uh, Pershing Capital, and they've got their own SPAC. You might be saying, well, Reddit, this one's just like, it's at fucking $30. It's, it went from 10 to 30 No. Uh, they, they can change the net asset floor depending on how much cash they got. So Pershing Square is actually the largest SPAC right now. And because of that, their floor is just a tiny little bit higher than everybody else is sitting at 20 bucks. So their net asset value is 20 bucks. Anything above that, you're investing in the next company, the company that they decide to merge with. So... And that was a little bit of a crash course on SPACs. It didn't cover everything. It's just kind of notes that I jotted down while, I, while people were asking me questions and what, what I thought would be important. So if you have any questions or perhaps I misspoke or or, uh, or you want some more clarification on something, please drop the, uh, you know, just drop them in the comments down below. We'll have a discussion there and maybe we can make some money together. I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to sit here and uh, listen and we'll, well, I'll see you guys in the next video.